Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another exciting meeting of the MSAT Club. This is our weekly call for Monday, November the 18th, 2013. My name is Don Osborne. I am the creator of the MCAT Club, and I am also your host, as well as being a medical school admissions expert slash consultant slash coach kind of a guy. I work with students who really, really want to get into medical school but may be stuck or feel a degree of uncertainty about, you know, parts of their application profile and maybe would like to get some helpful advice from somebody with a wide range of experience in medical school admissions. I can pretty much guarantee you that I am the most uplifting, hope-filled, and encouraging advisor you'll ever meet because I, my goal is to help you get into medical school. My goal is not to evaluate where your current state is and uh, make you feel upset or discouraged about um, you know, if you have a temporary bad grade or, you know, struggle with the MCAT or some other circumstance, my job is to help figure out solutions around those kinds of problems so that you can become a highly qualified candidate for medical school, get accepted to medical school, become a doctor, and do what you really want to do, which is to serve other human beings and help them stay healthy. So today, uh, before we started, uh, I started this, this session, I was talking um, with one of our MCAT Club members, and her name, she goes by Susan. Hi, Susan, how are you? Good evening. Hi, and so here's the question that Susan asked me a moment ago, and I liked it so much that I wanted to talk about this on the call. And the question was, I have already done some volunteering uh, and I've already gotten a good amount of shadowing experience done. So I'm not sure that doing more of the same kinds of shadowing is going to be as much good to me and I'm really wondering whether or not it's of any value at all whatsoever. So here's what I talked about. Um, my brother just finished his master's degree in social work. And he had an opportunity to volunteer at a not-for-profit shortly after he graduated where he could have uh, built an entire program uh, for that organization. He could have, I mean, he, he had some specializations in anger management, and they really wanted him to write and to run a program on anger management for their, their members. He's got a lot of experience in drug and alcohol counseling, he could have been doing that for them. They needed some help there. And on and on, there's all kinds of opportunities that he had uh, that he could have been doing while he was looking for full-time employment. Um, so I was really excited for him. I thought, oh, it would be great. This is a really good opportunity for him to make a contribution. It's going to really look good on his resume professionally. It's going to really help him a lot. I was really surprised when uh, he told me that he decided to stop volunteering for the organization, he quit the organization, left, and just broke all contact with them. I'm like, wow, what happened? He said, well, the organization did not have anybody who could supervise him in the way that he needed to be supervised in order for it to benefit him for his um, licensing as a um, marriage and family counselor. Uh, and I was really saddened to hear that because I think he got this all backwards. And, um, you know, Susan, the question that you raised is spot on to this, which is, you know, what's in it for me to go back and, you know, all I'm going to be able to do is sort of observe. I can't really do anything. Well, what my brother missed, um, and I think he regrets now, is – Sure, he wouldn't have necessarily been able to get the clinical licensing uh, requirements fulfilled, but that's just a detail that, you know, he can manage moving forward. And what I really wish, you know, I really wish he would have given me an opportunity to coach him on this because I would have said to him, look, go ahead, do this volunteer work, get involved, get, get engaged, participate, and then along the way, 
find somebody else who's either in the organization or is a friend of the organization who can get you the uh, the licensing that the, the licensing requirements that you need. And so, for all the people out there who are listening to this, when you go into a volunteer experience and you say, you know what, I've done this a million billion times, I don't really think it's going to be a big benefit to me. I'm bored out of my mind. You're thinking about it backwards. In my humble opinion, what I would really, really encourage you to do instead is, okay, first, let me go ahead and make as much contribution as I possibly can within the organization, whatever it is that you have chosen or that you know, you're being forced to, to, uh, to do because of circumstance. Let me go ahead and make maximum contribution, and then after I've gotten that figured out, then let me see how I might be able to leverage where I'm at and see if I can find a way for it to work for me. Okay, so that is, uh, I think, a great trick, or really it's kind of a reframe, right? It's a way of rethinking the circumstance. And I'm, I'm always putting the other party first. I'm always putting the organization first. I'm putting the volunteer circumstance first and working hard to serve and fulfill their needs before I worry about my own. 